Happy Friday and thanks for watching This Week in Discovery News. I'm Trace and each week we lay out the top stories of the week plus your social media comments. This week we are talking about whether Pixar's new heroine is gay and if that matters, how dolphins' brains are very similar to ours, and how physicists aren't saying there's no god, they're just saying that if there is one, they don't have to work that hard. Our first story is... The universe, no God required. Last weekend, while you were outside enjoying the beautiful weather, some scientists were sitting in a room at the SETICON 2 conference in Santa Clara, California. During the conference, one of the panels was all about the Big Bang and whether its spark was alighted by a divine power. Hello everyone, welcome to the Big Bang panel. Uh, it would seem we're a full house today, so that's really good. Thanks for coming. Unsurprisingly, the resounding answer was no. One astrophysicist on the panel, Alex Filipenko of UC Berkeley, said that with the laws of physics, you get universes. More or less implying that under these laws, the universe could essentially create itself. The common follow-up to a statement like that is, but how were the laws of physics created? Or something similar. Alex Filipenko had an answer to that one too. He acquiesced that the divine spark may have created the laws of physics, but since no one really knows who created the divine spark, let's just go back to the laws of physics. A little circular logic there. Last year, the king of physics, Stephen Hawking, said that there is no God, there is no heaven, and that the whole idea is a fairy story for those that are afraid of the dark. Then last week, Filipinko said, I don't think you can use physics to prove or disprove God. Ultimately, physicists aren't pitting science against religion. In fact, scientists would be the first to tell you that they don't have all of the answers. What they are saying is that the universe, as far as we can experience it, is powered by physical laws as opposed to mythical gods. If you want to read more of the controversy, visit discoverynews.com slash no god required. The second biggest story this week takes us from big bangs to blowholes. Dolphins and humans share brainy genes. We've discovered similarities between dolphin and human brains that make us seem more alike than you thought, but it's not what you think. It's long been known that dolphins are some of the world's most intelligent mammals, but to be more precise, the genetic similarities that exist between dolphins and humans extend to other brainy animals as well. For example, elephants and great apes. The research uncovered a common thread throughout all of these smarty pants species. We all have genes that cause large generation times, large parental investment, and small effective population size. Sorry to ruin your playground taunts, but this means that evolution began to value the quality of one's brain as opposed to simple quantity of brain. More or less, that means that a bigger brain don't mean nothing. All of these findings could strengthen the claim that the dolphin is the world's second most intelligent animal. So next time you're watching Flipper, keep an eye out for who's giving orders to whom. Use your big old brain and find out more at discoverynews.com slash smartdolphin. Finally, the last story of the week generated quite the buzz. Is Pixar's new heroine gay? This is the first time one of our D-News nuggets has ever made it into this week in Discovery News. This question was asked by The Atlantic.com, Entertainment Weekly, Salon.com, and even Stephen Colbert. So we linked out to show you that it was a big story. The heroine from the Pixar movie Brave, Merida, is a tough and sporty archer who would rather be riding a horse than wearing a dress. But does this mean that she is somehow a tomboy lesbian? All stereotypes about lesbianism aside, Chris Heller writes in a post on The Atlantic, At its core, Brave preaches acceptance. It's about having the bravery to embrace one's own identity. Those themes resonate across society, but perhaps most strongly these days with those of LGBT people. The film doesn't need to tell us whether Marita is gay, but it does make us ask. We know that Pixar spent years working on this film. Therefore, we also know that they planned every aspect of Marita's personality and character. Did they create a gay, straight, or maybe even asexual character for a specific reason? Maybe, maybe not, but it did get us talking about it, and maybe that was the point. What do you think? Check out our conversation on Facebook and leave a comment, plus check out the news nugget at discoverynews.com slash pixarbrave. That's it for me. Thanks for tuning in to This Week in Discovery News. Make sure that you like us on Facebook, that you're following us on Twitter, and that you check out our Tumblr. You can also subscribe to our Discovery Daily Newsletter, Links to all of those and subscription options are at discoverynews.com. Keep commenting and tweeting, I see them all. Have a great week and we'll see you next Friday. Rah! The commoners I on see. Facebook. I thought you were saying. Oh, oh, oh. I'm containing my joy. Yeah. I can't do that. She's a tough and sporty archer who'd rather be riding her horse than wearing a dress. Hey.
Okay. My joy is here. Yeah. Not here, but here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Come on, Katie. That's, that's all that's going to make it 